Hey Space Timers, it's time for another t-shirt challenge question. And as you'll see, this one is a bit harder than the last one we did. This time around, you're gonna need some math and you'll need to be familiar with high school level physics. Let me give you some general background first and then I'll set up the specifics for you. For the purposes of this challenge, I want you to treat gravity and all physics Newtonianly. That means clocks run at the same rate everywhere, space and time are two separate things, and gravity is an actual force that masses exert on each other. No space time, no relativity. All right. Pretend you have a sphere with the same mass density throughout. That sphere is not rotating and it's not orbiting any other larger bodies. For simplicity, I'm gonna to refer to this sphere as a planet, but it could be any other massive body, a star, whatever. Suppose that a particle is orbiting the planet right at the surface. And I know technically it's not orbiting if it's on the surface, so fine, if it makes you feel better, say that it's orbiting a billionth of a nanometer above the surface. I think you know what I mean. Anyway. In Newtonian gravity, you can work out an expression for the orbital speed of this particle in terms of the mass and radius of the planet, or in terms of the density and radius of the planet. You can also work out how much time it would take to go halfway around the globe. Keep that in mind, and now imagine a second particle that we release from rest at the planet's surface and that we allow to fall through the center of the planet to the other side. You can imagine doing this with a super thin evacuated tunnel along a diameter of the planet, but I think it's easier to pretend that the planet is a uniformly dense fluid and that this particle can pass through that fluid without friction. Again, I think you know what I mean here. This is not supposed to be a trick question. Here's the challenge. At the same time that the orbiting particle passes this point, let's release the second particle from rest from exactly the same height. Remember, they're both on the planet's surface. Now, each of them will eventually arrive at the antipodal point on the planet. The question is, which one reaches the other side first? Now, there's a small roadblock. When the second particle is inside the planet, how do you calculate the gravitational force on it? After all, as it falls, some of the mass is above it. Well, you can use calculus to figure that out. It's something called Gauss's law. But let me tell you how that part of the problem works so that you can solve the rest of the problem without calculus using only algebra. Here's the deal. At any given location inside the planet, the particle will feel only the gravitational force from whatever mass is closer to the center of the planet than the particle is. With that fact, plus the fact that the density is uniform, plus some basic geometry about spheres, you should be able to get a formula for the gravitational force on the particle when it's a distance little r from the center of the planet. Here's a big hint. The expression for the gravitational force on the second particle when it's inside the planet should algebraically resemble a familiar non-gravitational force that you also study in high school physics. In fact, drawing an algebraic analogy between the gravitational and non-gravitational situations is actually the key to figuring out the travel time of the second particle without using calculus. You'll notice I haven't given you any numbers, and that's because you don't need them. The answer to which particle wins the race comes out the same regardless of the mass and radius of the planet or of the masses of the two particles. The point is to figure out the general answer through a combination of physical reasoning and algebra. Now, as far as I know, you can't get the answer without doing algebra, but if you think you have an airtight argument that doesn't require algebra, you're welcome to submit it. Which brings me to submission. You guys know the drill. Email your answers to pbsspacetime at gmail.com before 5 p.m. New York City time on the date that you see on the screen. Use the subject line, two particle Newtonian gravity challenge. It's not case sensitive and you should not include the quotation marks, but other than that, use this exact subject line, including the hyphen, because we filter these things automatically. Now, from among the correct answers, we will randomly select five people to receive a PBS Digital Studios t-shirt. As usual, answers must be accompanied by correct explanations or they don't count. Also, as usual, do not discuss the question or post your answers in the comments page here or on Reddit or on any public internet forum until after we announce the winners. Be cool. Finally, I want to discuss the Einsteinian version of this question. Namely, if the particles depart simultaneously as measured by the clock at one end of the planet, which one arrives first according to the clock at the other end of the planet? Now, this question can also be answered, but now you need some knowledge of general relativity and you need calculus. So I'm gonna speak technically for a minute to viewers who actually know something about this. Ready? You have to solve the Einstein equations in the presence of a spherically symmetric perfect fluid whose energy density is the same when measured locally by an observer that's instantaneously at rest at any location in that fluid. Okay, once you find the metric, you can then find the circular geodesics and the radial geodesics and work out who arrives first according to the clock on the other side of the planet. Now, I've never actually worked this out, but you guys can do it. Why don't we have a second challenge? 
You can submit your answers to that challenge by email with the subject line, Two Particle Einsteinian Gravity Challenge. Five random people with correct answers and explanations will receive a t-shirt. You can only enter one challenge though, Newton or Einstein, pick one. Now I know you could always make up a second email address and enter twice, but don't do that because if you can enter the Einsteinian challenge at all, that means you can solve the Newtonian challenge in about 60 seconds, which isn't much of a challenge. So don't enter both, honor system. Anyway, that's it. As I told you, it's a harder challenge this time, but you also have more time and both the Newtonian and Einsteinian versions of the question are pretty fun exercises. I encourage you to talk to your friends about it because physics is a social activity, just don't do it in a public internet forum. That way everyone has a chance. Anyway, good luck to all of you and have fun with it. We'll announce the solution in two weeks time, but I will see you guys next week for my final episode of Space Time. Yeah.